My job is fully taking photos and videos of uh, properties for rental and for sale in Edinburgh, Scotland, the UK. We'll go, we'll go for that. Um, and uh, and I use a digital SLR. In fact, I use a couple. Um, but uh, I can I can pretty much do the whole job with the Canon 5D Mark II, which I've had now for about three or so years. Um, and uh, it's done a fantastic job. No complaints about it. The only things I would say is that you know if it could do more frames a second, because um, it maxes out at 30 frames a second uh, for uh, photos, f for video, and uh, in photos it's only like three and a half, four frames a second. So it does mean if I'm doing like a HDR multiple exposure, I would need to really kind of put it on a tripod. And um, but other than that, it's it works really well. It's also got uh, it captures good audio if I put a little microphone on it and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's uh, it's done really well. I didn't bother upgrading to the Mark III because a it was hella expensive. Like when I got the Mark the Mark II, it was only about one thousand four hundred. Uh, the Mark III came out and it was two thousand two hundred pounds. I think it still is around about there actually. Um, and uh, and I was like, okay, what extra benefit am I getting? Am I getting a high resolution? No. Am I getting more frames a second? No. Am I getting more dynamic range? No, not really. There, uh, there didn't seem to be much reason for me to upgrade whatsoever. I've seen some videos where it looks like it's ISO capabilities and video are a bit better, um, but generally my ISO uh, on my camera rarely goes above ISO 2000. Um, I, I try and keep it in the, the good ISO ranges, the 640, the 1250 or the 320 um, ranges because they generally have a little bit less uh, ISO noise um, but uh, it, it's not very often that I need to go above that. If I do need to go above that it's usually already a dark room um, that that uh, it, it doesn't really matter that much um, and in photo wise I, I'd never really have to go above anything uh, above that like I'd never really go above ISO 2000 unless I'm taking a picture of a dark stairwell um, you know that's the only time so I'm not really needing a camera that can go super high but the, the advantage of being able to go a lot higher in the ISO is I could use a smaller aperture so I'm normally shooting at f 3.5 f4 um, at 16 millimeters as long as you're focused at least kind of a meter and a half in front of you uh, at f4 your you pretty much everything in that room will be within focus uh that that's, that's not a problem um and uh and yeah so if i was able to go for a higher iso if i was able to put it up to quite happily up to iso 3200 i could go to aperture f 5.6 or somewhere around about that um and that that could be a little bit more beneficial potentially get a little bit of vignetting out of the corners which you don't really see in the video, you see it in the photos sometimes, but again, that doesn't really matter. So get rid of the vignetting, possibly make it a little bit sharper and give me a little bit more depth of field. But it's not really a deal breaker in any way whatsoever. Um, the, the, recently I got the Panasonic GH4 and uh, that one has a smaller sensor. So with a smaller sensor, you use lenses which have a smaller um, focal length. So for the same field of view, on my fuel frame, which is needing a 16 millimeter lens, on my Panasonic GH4, I'm using a seven millimeter lens. So a seven millimeters means that you've, you have more depth of field at the same aperture. So that's actually pretty, pretty good benefit. So I can understand the reason of going, oh, get a smaller sensor uh, camera um, for doing property stuff. The only thing was the GH4, it's, uh, its ISO performance is just not that great uh, in comparison. Um, I really noticed when I was boosting up to about ISO 1250, I was really, I was really noticing it. My clients didn't, but for me as the as the cameraman and the editor, I'm looking around ways to make sure there's as little noise in it as possible. Because the worst thing is you do a whole video and somebody goes, oh, it's really grainy and noisy. Can you shoot it again? And you go, no, <laughs> oh my God, that's like, a whole day's worth of work uh, being having to be redone again. Um, so the the whole job is to make sure just get it clean, get it sorted, so you don't have to go back out and reshoot uh, and do any of that kind of stuff. And there are some uh, like uh, in uh, post editing softwares where you can bring in some noise reduction into the actual video. Um, however, that really 
makes the rendering time a heck of a lot longer. Um, and I haven't really, visually I haven't really noticed that much of a difference. I'm um, granted if you, if you take it into like YouTube or something, YouTube compresses it so much you don't notice much of the noise, but on the video files which I use, um, I was noticing it and it was annoying me and I'm shooting a lot of it for like a big screen HD TV uh, in property office windows. Um, so that, that was the only kind of bummer thing. So I would have to, and the lens I've only got is an f4. I could go down to an f2.8, um, but there isn't one which is that wide with the Panasonic system at the moment. Um, so that's the only slight bummer. And also it's ISO settings are not the same as what uh, Canon have. So in other words, whenever it says it's ISO 800, it will be giving an exposure which is actually about ISO 450 um, in terms of its its brightness uh, in comparison to something like the Canon or the Nikon. Um, so you just kind of go, right, this ISO setting is, is not as good as it should be. I need to have it even higher. So instead of, if the Canon's at 1250, the Panasonic would have to be about 2,000 ISO. And you're like, oh, that's that's not that's really bringing in a lot of green uh, and a lot of noise coming into the image. So that that's where uh, for dark pro for bright properties in Spain, in sunshine, in the conservatory, absolutely, oh, superb. You don't need to worry about it at all. It's even got better dynamic range as well and everything. Um, but in in low light, dark areas in Scotland where it's not very bright, uh, it, it has its limitations. But at the same time, there's always a question of why Why don't you just get, uh, why do people always bitch about uh, the video capabilities of a digital camera? Why don't they just get a video camera? And that's, that's uh, that would have been a valid point for somebody who is doing something like documentary filming. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, however, the stuff which I do requires me to have an ultra wide angle lens to be able to get as much of the room in as possible. Um, it also requires me uh, to take photos at the same time. So if I'm having to do it with an actual video camera, I'm having to bring a video camera and uh, a digital camera, digital SLR anyway. So it's like, why would I bother bringing two? Why would I go to the expense of buying a video camera on top of that? Next thing is the video cameras uh, usually aren't, uh, it'd be a whole extra new ergonomic system that I'd have to figure out. It's like, where's the buttons? What does that do? And all that kind of stuff. It's like, why would I bother doing that when I know how to do it already on a digital SLR? Um, the other thing is the, the sensors on, on most, um, hand, not handy cams, but like video cameras uh, are even smaller than micro four thirds. So usually like 1.6 inch or something, just uh, tiny, tiny little sensors. So great, loads of depth of field. You almost never need to think about that. Um, but uh, I haven't seen anybody use them. In fact, the only places that I have seen people use them is uh, on some like BBC programs. And you think, oh, well, if it's good enough for the BBC, then it's good enough for you. But the thing is, I notice whenever I'm watching the BBC programs, they're not cinematic or anything like that. They are usually quick cuts to the presenter, to the room, and it's, it doesn't really show off the properties to, to a very good, uh, uh, in a very good way. Um, the, the other thing is, is you just don't get a wide enough angle. You can get, most of them are saying, oh, like the equivalent of a 25 millimeter lens. Okay, you can get adapters, but most of the adapters still bring it to around, oh, we've taken off by, times it by 0 0.75. So it's actually comes down to around about uh, 20 millimeters. So again, I'm looking for every millimeter possible uh, to get as wide an angle as a shot, because a lot of times, the important thing is to be able to see from one side of the room to the other so that people can see the, maybe the entrance door all the way over to the ensuite bathroom area in one shot instead of having to do multiple shots of people having to try and figure out how does that room link to that one um, and uh, and certainly video wise you you don't really like having it where you'd have to do multiple shots of all that stuff it's just be a whole extra thing to carry around and a lot of my work uh, it requires me to just be fast, efficient, and I suppose effectively done to a budget as well. Um, any kind of property video that I'm doing, most of it is between uh, 300 to 400 pounds cost-wise. Um, so for me to go out, shoot it, have the gear, have the lenses, uh, also do the photos at the same time, possibly the floor plans, the travel, the insurance and all that kind of stuff, um, it's a case of I need to really be doing maybe like two properties a day um, to to break even uh, almost, um, and uh, 
that that at the moment is absolutely fine. I'm totally. I've got all that amount of work. I've got more than enough work uh, at the moment. It's, I've got so much stuff to do, and. Uh, uh, the, but the, the, I've got so much stuff to do, so many places to go, so many mo properties to shoot. The thought of then having to relearn a whole new system, doing it with the video camera, figuring out angles, figuring out lenses, figuring out all that stuff. Just like there's, there's no chance I would bother doing that. that, that that's a whole, uh, you know, if I was just starting out, maybe I would. But at the same time, I just don't know of any cameras or lenses that you can put on cameras which are within my budget that uh, that would be beneficial you know it's like oh great you could go get the Canon was it the Canon 300c which is like a 4k video camera yeah it's a 4k video camera which requires a huge amount of uh, pre-production and I mean like like just getting in you getting the tripod set up you need a bigger tripod it's bigger bigger system uh, the amount of like it's so easy for me to just go plonk shoot next room plonk shoot there there'd be so much more stuff to do and the cost of it itself is about ten thousand pounds for the camera on its own and then you need the lenses on the front however i don't think it's even a full frame sensor on that i don't think uh, i need to double check that one but uh the the idea of and and it's it's yeah it's probably out of my region so there's there's many video cameras that could potentially do the job that i'm doing but they're way out of my price region and at the same time, you know, it's, it's not just the price region of me buying it, it's the cost of insuring, uh, having it under insurance, but also the danger of, you know, if, if I drop my Canon 5D Mark II, uh, that's, that's maybe a thousand pounds worth of broken, but I can go to any shop and pick up another one the next day. If I drop a Canon 100 or 300C, that's ten thousand pounds worth of broken, and there's not you don't really get next day delivery of those things. Uh, and you know, here's my credit card. Credit card maxes out two thousand pounds. It's like, all oh, right, so I can't pay with credit card. I need to have this money sitting in my bank account. And get, and I'm not even saying, oh, if I drop it or break it. What if somebody breaks into my car while I'm putting in the tripod into into the house, or I put the the camera in the house and I come back out, get the tripod, and then all of a sudden somebody's broken into the house. And so, so there's so many kind of options where you just kind of go. You have to be cost efficient in every part of your work. Um, other, otherwise, you know, if, if I was a team of like six people doing it and we had a lot of kind of uh, redundancy is, is the word. So if we had people that are going, oh, wait, if you can't do it with that, I've got another camera. Or if you can't dig it all in at the same time, we can all do it and all that kind of stuff. Then, then it would work. But as a one man band, you don't, re you, time and effort is money. It really is. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, just going, trying to figure out a whole new system, and trying to figure out the costs and the, the difficulty of uh, reshooting. Just what a pain in that! Uh, just just not going to happen. Um, so, but that, that, that's just kind of my opinion at the moment. Um, and uh, if I was more of a a film company that was shooting adverts and shooting all this kind of stuff, then yeah, maybe. I would, but I would need to be, the budget would have to be far, far larger. Um, so at the moment, budget, like a day rate is around about four or five hundred pounds, um, depending on how much work needed to be done and the, the stuff that's required. Um, but uh, if, if it's requiring stuff where you're needing full cameras, you're going up to like two thousand pounds a day, uh, basic. <laughs> you know, and then, then usually the cost of the rental on top. Um, so it's a, it's a tricky one. Um, but at the same time, yeah, I don't see myself in any way um, buying a video camera to do the videos of the properties which I shoot. Um, it would just be completely pointless.